We're going to be starting a new series of uh, lessons today, amen, and uh, hallelujah, it's going to be good, praise the Lord, it is going to be good. Let's go on our Bibles over to the book of Luke, the 11th chapter and the 28th verse, and we'll read out of the voice translation, Luke 11 and 28 out of the voice translation. Let's read together, ready, read. No, how blessed are those who hear God's voice and make God's message their way of life. Jesus Christ says, no, 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 no. I'm going to tell you who the blessed people are. The blessed people are those who hear God's voice and then make the message, God's message, their way of life. Amen. And we're going to title this series, Living My Blessed Life. Amen. Living my blessed life. This is this is lesson one, and we'll title it, It's All About the Heart. We'll title today's lesson, It's All About the Heart. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time circled together around your word. I thank you for every believer that have assembled themselves together in this house and those who've assembled themselves together online, oh God. We thank you. We declare, Father, that uh, as we receive and apply your word and act upon the truths and principles, God, that our lives will be blessed and transformed. Father, we honor you and we yield to the leading of your Holy Spirit and we say have your way in this place. God, since you know what's name by name and situation by situation, tailor this lesson we're asking you to meet each of us right where we are, bringing forth an incredible and an amazing harvest. We declare that our lives are blessed in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. amen. All right, so I'm going to talk to you. You know, it's always pastor's goal and desire for you to be blessed. I want you to be blessed. I want you to experience every promise that God makes out of his word. And one of my jobs and responsibilities it is for me to, uh, to teach you these principles so that you can live the life that God died for, that Christ died for. The objective of this series of lessons is to reveal the power of, of living, uh, to reveal the power of living by principle of the word of God, empowering the believer to live the life that Christ sacrificed and prepared for Christians to live. As you receive this revelation and insight, I want you to understand that this lesson, uh, if, you, if you receive it, will not only just say, not only will you be blessed, but I'm telling you that it'll bless your relationships. Yeah, it'll bless your marriage. Amen. It'll bless your businesses. Amen. And your work. It'll best bless your life. And that is what this series is designed to do. Uh, as you receive this revelation, every series is designed to do that. But as you receive this information and then share it or, or uh, apply it to your life, it is really going to make incredible and amazing impact in your life. Amen. I'm ready. Hallelujah. To live my blessed life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go on our Bibles over to the book of Matthew, the seventh chapter and verses one through two. Now, listen, I want to tell you something. This is a little secret. I know, you, you know, well, let me just tell you. So uh, you need to go ahead and get with me early because I won't be before you long. Amen. I, I, I know there's a few chuckles because you're like, yeah, <laughs> you, you say that every Sunday. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, I'm for real. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. All right, Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses one, one and two. Let's read this section of scripture together, saints of God. Ready? Read. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Hallelujah. He says, first of all, don't judge or you're going to be judged too. And then he says, whatever measure you meet is going to be measured back to you Again, hallelujah. Before y'all bring up audio team, before you bring up the next slide, I just want to make a reference here real quick. Um, the reference is in the, in the book of Luke, and we're going to go there in a few seconds, but in the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, uh, verses 37 and 38, at the beginning of the verse, he says, judge not, and you shall not be judged. And then at the end of verse 38, he says, for with the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you Again, now this is very important because he's telling us now, hey, listen, don't judge. Don't judge. And if you do judge, you're going to be judged. And then whatever measure you use to judge others is going to be measured back to you, but in greater measure. Hallelujah. 
Glory be unto God. Say this verse with me. Say, judge not. Judge so, not. I so I won't be judged. For with whatever judgment, whatever judgment I, judge, I judge, I will, I will be, judged. be judged. And with the measure, with the measure I, use, I use, it will be, it will be measured, back measured back to me, to me again. again. Now let's go over to Luke 6, 37 and 38. God is there's, there's something here when we look at this, because I read to you a few seconds ago the beginning and the end of verse 37 and 38, but there's something in the middle. There's something in the middle that's really, really interesting. Hallelujah. Let's read this together. Ready? Read. Stop judging, and you will never be judged. Stop condemning, and you will never be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give and you will receive a large quantity pressed together, shaken down, and running over will be put into your pocket. The standards you use for others will be applied to you. It's interesting because when you read this scripture, money is never used. You never, but we always associate this scripture with money. But he didn't say anything about money. Especially whenever we read the Bible, whenever we hear the word give in church, first of all, people start shaking. No, let me stop. <laughs> but whenever we use it with the word give, we instantly start thinking money. But when you really look at this, money was never used. Hmm. That's interesting. So what is he really talking about? He's really talking about the heart. Everyone say, it's all, it's all about, the heart. about the heart. Hallelujah. One person says, well, you know, um, uh, years ago, people used to say, you know, man, um, uh, they seems like a pastor teacher on giving all the time. Well, I would have to agree that I do preach on giving all the time. Well, so you preach about money all the time. I don't preach about money all the time, but I preach about giving. First of all, in the kingdom, when you talk about grace, you can't talk about grace without talking about for God so loved the world that he If we're going to have good, healthy relationships, we can't talk about marriage relationships. We can't talk about relationships because any marriage relationship is going to be a good one is based on giving. Amen. And if either one of those parties violate that principle, you're going to end up with a broken, dysfunctional, heart-wrenching, gritty, angry, fighting back and forth relationship. Because there has to be within that relationship Giving. Amen. Hallelujah. So if they say, Pastor, you preach on giving all the time, all the time, man, all the time. But not about money. Hallelujah. There are a few times a year that we preach on money. And people say, well, you know, the, you know, the, the, the church is after your money. No, the church is not after your money. God is. Amen. Oh, God, no, listen to me. God is after your money. I'm going to let that marinate for a second. No, God is after your money. Hallelujah. Why? Because where your treasure is, there will your heart be. He's after your heart. And if God can get your money, he'll have your heart. Amen. One preacher said, you can see it. There is an invisible string that attaches your wallet to your heart. You can see it every time you have to reach for it. When somebody wants something, you're like, oh, oh, it hurts. <laughs> Some of y'all get that when you get home. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So he sandwiches giving in the middle of, of, of this scripture where he talks about judgment. What is he really dealing with? He's dealing with the issue of the heart. Amen. Amen. And he tells us this revelation 
Whatever you give, you're going to get it back in greater measure. We understand this because the Bible taught us, and God taught us already. He said that as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and, and harvest. So if I, take a, if I take an apple seed and plant that apple seed, I'm not just going to get an apple seed back. I'm going to get a tree that bears apples, that bears more seed. Hallelujah. So he's really teaching us this incredible and amazing principle that whatever we do, we're going to get that back in greater measure. So what is he saying? Oh, if you hand out judgment, you're going to get judgment back from men. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will people give judgment unto you. If you hand out unforgiveness, you know what you're going to get back? Unforgiveness, and it's coming to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. But you don't really hear people talking about that. But that's what he's talking about. Whatever it is that we give, we're going to get it back, but we're going to get it in greater measure. Hallelujah. Amen. But if I give out a good attitude, if I give out forgiveness, if I pass out grace, if I hand out mercy, <laughs> glory to God. That's going to come back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over. Hallelujah. Amen. And sometimes people don't really equate that. We don't understand this principle in, in, in practicality. Like, you know, what does this really look like, you know, practically in our lives? It's, it's like, and, and, and you can see people miss it all the time. There's a story about a lady. She, she you know, she had came up to the church and uh, she went in. She was going to uh, talk to the pastor, but she was sitting out in the secretary's office talking to the secretary. She came up there with her kids. She's like, yeah, I just want to meet with the pastor for a few moments and uh, just talk to him about the family and just get some a little bit of counseling because, you know, we're having all types of issues. My children, oh, my God, my children yell at me all the time. They are extremely disrespectful. They yell all the time. And so I brought all three of them here and uh, I just want to sit down and talk to the pastor and uh, just, hey, will y'all be quiet? I'm trying to tell her what's going on. <laughs> you know what she got? She got what she sold. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. She had been yelling at her own kids. And then she got the harvest back. Amen. Deuteronomy 15. Let's go to Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 and 8. Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 and 8. Hallelujah. Let's read this scripture together out of the King, uh, King James Bible. Let's read. Ready? Read. If there is among you a poor man of your brethren within any of the gates in your land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not harden your Harden your what? He says, do not harden your heart. So he's talking about the heart. You shall not harden your heart. Come on. Nor shut your hand from your poor brother, but you shall open your hand wide to him and willingly lend him sufficient for his need, whatever he needs. Amen. So he's dealing here now with the issue of the heart. This whole thing is all about the heart. God's trying to get our heart to change. Yeah. Amen. And he wants our heart to change. Tell your neighbor, say, change your heart. Change your heart. So if we're going to be like God, I want to share with you four things we need to do if we're going to be generous givers. Four things we need to do if we're going to be generous givers. Number one, number one, deal with a selfish heart. Deal with a selfish heart. In Deuteronomy 15 and 9, the word says, Be aware, lest there be a wicked thought in your heart. Here it is again. Saying, the seventh year, the year of release, is at hand. And your eye be evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing. And he cry out to the Lord against you, and it becomes sin among you. Well, what's going on here? This is what the Lord said. He said, listen, you need to be, 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 be careful now. Be careful unless, be, uh, unless there be a wicked thought. Where? 
in your heart. He says this is what's happening. See, in those days, God had an economic system of debt release every seven years. The year of Jubilee, supernatural debt release, all debt is forgiven. Amen. And so that was his economic system. How, how many of you wish we had that system today? <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, my God. Hey, yo, no, no, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he had this system of supernatural debt release. So, there, so anybody who had debt, you had to forgive them of that debt after seven years. So he says now, be careful lest you have the evil thought. Here you are in year six, and it's June. And then one of the servants come and say, hey, hey, master, listen, can I... Boss, can I, can, I, can I borrow? We had a bad harvest this year, and uh, we're running a little low. Can, can I borrow some, some, some of this, and can I borrow some of that, and borrow some of this, and I'll pay you back? And he says, be careful lest you have the thought and say, yeah, so. Yeah, six months. They're not going to be able to pay this back in six months. The year of Jubilee is here. Amen. In six months, I'm going to have to forgive the debt, so I'm not going to lend to them because I know they don't even have a chance to pay it back. He said, Beware unless you have that evil thought, that wicked thought in your heart. God calls selfish thoughts wicked thoughts. Oh, man. Call selfish thoughts what? Wicked thoughts. Amen. He said, don't do that. Greed and selfishness are not proper motives for giving. Amen. God really wants to work that that kind of stuff out of us. He wants to get greedy, selfish thinking the, 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 uh, out of our hearts. The selfish takers. He wants to get that out of our hearts. He wants us to get, to get the ungratefulness out of our heart and work into our heart generous generosity and gratefulness into our hearts. He wants us to be generous people, and generous people are happy people. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So one professor stood before his class. And he posed this question to the class. He says, why did God create giving? I want you to think about that for a moment. Why did God create giving? For what reason, what purpose did he create giving? The class got together and they were talking. There was all this discussion and that kind of thing. And they came back with a resounding agreement that God gave giving or created giving. They said, well, did God create it? Yeah, you see it throughout the Bible. They said, well, they came back and, the, and their answer was God created giving to support his work in the earth. Amen. Yeah, we say, boy, that is a good answer. But let's, let me ask you this question. Do you really think that God needs your money to do anything? Let's, let's put this in perspective. Do you really think that he needs your, first of all, that piece of paper with a dead man on it. Do you really think God created the heaven and the earth before you got here? He made the sun, the stars, the moon. He made the land and the water. He made the beast of the field, the fowl of the air. He made the fish of the sea. All of this without you created all the angels. Hallelujah. You think that he really needs your dead presidents? No, 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 no. He does not. He really, really, really does not. God, God created giving to work selfishness out of our hearts. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yep. Yeah. He created giving to work selfishness out of our heart. And God didn't create giving for his sake. He created giving for your sake. And this is what is so interesting. If you really think about it, you know, you, 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 it bothers me. When I hear preachers uh, or faith teachers teach that you have to give, that you need to give to get. It's, it's think about this for a second. Because if you are thinking, oh my God, you know what? I need breakthrough. I got to hurry up and do this, so let me sow a seed. You're not sowing the seed being generous. You're not sowing the seed to be a blessing. You're sowing the seed so you can get what you want. That's no different than the world. And when that principle is being taught, 
it, it doesn't take greed and selfishness out of our heart. It deposits more greed and selfishness in our heart because we start looking at God like, yeah, let me play the lotto. Hey, listen, God, I really, I really, I'm not coming to do anything that's going to bring honor or love to you. I really saw this principle in the Bible that if I give, then I'm going to get. So I'm going to give you this really so I can get, I'm going to give you $10 so you can give me back $1,000. That's crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. That works more selfishness right into our hearts. Now, it is true that when I give, I do receive. The problem is, is the motive behind the giving. Amen. Got it? It is the motive behind the giving. Amen. Ask your neighbor, what's your motive? Yeah, what's your motive? You know, you have to teach children, you have to teach children uh, uh, how to share. You have to teach them to share. You never have to teach them to be selfish. You know, you, you, if, if you ever see, you ever seen children sometimes, like like uh, children uh, uh, will, will, will have, uh, when you've had guests come over, and your child's got all their toys out, right? And the guests come over and they bring their kid, right? They may be the same age. And there's a ton of toys out. And they're, 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 they're playing with their toy, their favorite toy. And then they see the other kid pick up one of, one of their other toys. And then they drop this toy and they go, pick up, no, nah, no, nah, I was playing with that, mine. I was playing with that. No, you weren't. Hallelujah. It's selfish. You see, we are born selfish, but we're born again generous. Hallelujah. Amen. We're born again generous. You know, being selfish is easy. It's, it's just, it's instinctive. Hallelujah. There was a, a one, one, one lady uh, uh, showed up at church. Oh, she, she went down to the children's department to pick up her daughter from children's church. And when they got in the car, the little girl said, Mommy, Mommy, did you know that there was a lady in the Bible who gave God two pennies and that was all she had? And mother, the mother said, yes, baby, I know, I know all about that story. That was, that was a great story. She says, Mommy, I want to give. And then her mom said, well, great. Well, listen, all you have to do is pray, talk to God, and God will tell you what to give. And you can give a gift. And she said, okay. And she sat in the back seat, her mom looking at her through the rearview mirror. She stretched out her hands, and she says, what? You want me to give what? Not, not little Barbie. Oh, little Betty. Yes, I don't, you can have her. I don't like little Betty. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every once in a while, we do the same thing. Selfishness. You got to deal with a selfish heart. I do want to share this one revelation with you, though. Ladies, this is, this is real insightful for, us, for you to understand. Uh, there is a selfishness that a man, it's, it's in every man. I'm just telling you, it's in every man. You got it? And uh, so let, let me just share it with you. Men don't like to share their food. Okay? <laughs> they don't like to share their food. I got a witness. No, they don't. And just think about it. And women always want our food. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> You're going through the drive-thru, and uh, it's like, hey, hey, what you want? Oh, I don't want anything. I'll just have some of yours. <laughs> no. 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 No, you won't. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not really hungry. I'll just have a few bites of yours. No. <laughs> no. Amen. Generosity. Number two. Number two. Number one, we have to deal with a selfish heart. Number two, we must deal with a grieving heart. You have to deal with a grieving heart. Deuteronomy 15 and 10 says... You shall surely give to him. Here it is. He talked about giving again. 
you shall surely give to him and your heart should not be grieved. When you give to him, because for this thing, the Lord your God will bless you. In all your works and in all to which you put your hand to do, God is going to bless it. Amen. Amen. He's talking here again about the heart. If you learn to give from your heart and give with the right heart, the Bible says that God's going to bless you in greater measure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Everyone say it's all about the heart. But he says that when you give, you shouldn't give and then your heart is grieved. Have you ever given and then regretted that you gave? Oh, I didn't get a in there. I just heard a few grumbles down there, amen. You shouldn't give and then grieve over the fact that you've given. Think about it. Have you ever given and regretted? You sowed a seed or you helped somebody? Have you, have, you ever, have you ever given a sacrificial seed, for example, and then that following week something broke? The car broke, the house broke, somebody broke something. And then you started thinking, oh, man, if I hadn't given that, oh, man, I would, oh, golly. I started not to sow. Pastor started preaching all good. I got excited. I sold. I fed the soul. <laughs> or maybe you gave somebody some money, right? Hallelujah, and then something broke on the car, and you started grieving and regretting that you gave it. The Bible says when you give, he says, don't do that. Amen. Don't give that. See, what happens is that selfishness attacks you before you give. Amen. Grief attacks you after you give. Amen. Hallelujah. And many people give because they, they feel that they have to. And not because they want to. God wants to bless us in all we do. And he says here that when you give and you give, you give the right way with the right heart. God says, I'm going to bless you in all you do. And everything you put your hands to do. He says, I'm going to bless you. Is God pleased if we give with regret? If you give and then hate that you gave? Is he pleased? No. I mean, think about you. If somebody gave you something and then they, they, they were real grieved about it, they, they were angry about it or feeling, feeling some kind of way, amen? <laughs> some of you is like, I don't care. I just, hey, I got my... <laughs> no, but most times you'd be like, hey, no, 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 no. No, I'm good. Here, you going to act like that. Hallelujah. Imagine your child doing something for you. After everything you've done, your teenage child, they're going to do something for you, and then they're going to have an attitude about it. You'd be like, what? Boy, I changed your nasty boy. I, boy. When you were sick, couldn't walk, I took, you had a fever, you, boy. Them clothes you got on now, I bought them. Look at your old thick self. That's why you're so thick, because you're eating my food. No, you would, you, you would feel some kind of way when people do something for you, but they have a bad attitude about it. How do you think God feels? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Well, <clears throat> you know what? I need $100. I, I wish I had $100. I need $100 cash money. Money cash money. Oh, what's up, Ron? 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 Glory be unto God. Thank you, Ron. My man. Ron, smile. That boy Ron is all right. He sat down, his wife patted him. Good job, baby. <laughs> she said she needs some change, too. <laughs> Amen. 
Oh, Ron, Ron gave me that, well, thank you, Ron. He gave me that money and uh, just went back smiling and happy. Hallelujah. You're not grieved about it, are you, Ron? He said, no, not at all. Not grieved at all. It was a pleasure to give you that $100. Amen. Yeah, he's not grieved at all. Why, why, why isn't he grieved? He's not grieved because I gave him the money before service. <laughs> That's why he's not green. Smiling, happy. Ego pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, all he did was give me what was mine. So I would have to ask you, why would we be grieved about giving God a tithe? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He didn't really give it. He's returning it. The Bible says the tithe is the Lord's. The tithe belongs to God. All we're doing is returning back to God what God is giving. Why would we be grieved about that? Hallelujah. Maybe we missed what I said in the this, this series we just came out of, Why I Serve, when I said that servants think like stewards and not owners. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything is God's. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all God's. Amen. Number three, develop a generous heart. I have to develop a generous heart. Look what he says in Deuteronomy 15 and 14. You shall supply him liberally from your flock, from your threshing floor, and from your wine presses. From what the Lord has blessed you with, you shall, you shall give. So we take out a portion and we bless God and honor God. We help others with what we have. Amen. With whatever we have. God says he wants us to not just give enough, but he told us to give generously. He says, no, give, give that person from your flock. Give, give them some stuff from your threshing floor. Give them some stuff from your wine presses. Give generously. Amen. Everyone say, be generous. be generous. In the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, verses 30 through 36, I, you know, um, he's working on us about developing a generous heart. And he basically says, hey, listen, you know what? Uh, <clears throat> when someone comes to you and begs for you for, for help, um, uh, uh, you know, Give to that person what you have. When things are wrongly taken from you, do not demand that they be given back. However you wish to be treated by others is how you should treat everyone else. He says, are you really showing true love by only loving those who love you back? Even those who don't know God will do that. Are you really showing compassion when you do good deeds only to those who do good deeds to you? Even those who do not know God will do that. If you lend money only to those who, know, who you know will repay you, what credit is that to uh, your character? Even those who do not know God will do that. But love your enemies and continue to treat them well. When you lend money, don't despair, don't grieve if you are never paid back. For it is not lost. Uh-oh. He just told us something right there. He says, no, 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 no. It's not. Everyone say it's not lost. it's not lost. He says, it's not lost. You will receive a rich reward. And you will be known as a true child or true children of the Most High God. Having his same nature. For your father is famous for his kindness to heal even thankless and cruel. Show mercy and compassion for others, just as your heavenly Father overflows with mercy and compassion for all. What is he telling us to do? He's telling us to develop a generous heart. He is kind to the unthankful and the evil. That's us. <laughs> the Bible says, while you were yet sinners, Christ died. And how many times have we forgot to say to God, 
thank you, in the midst of our complaining, going through a storm, forgot to say thank you, forgetting all about how far God has brought us, we forgot to say thank you, not even looking at the clothes that's on our back and all the things that we do have, but focusing what we, on what we don't have and what we really want, we forgot to say thank you. And yet he loves us anyway. Hallelujah. God wants us to be generous as he is generous. Amen. We have to teach the children to be thankful. We all, and, and, and uh, express gratitude. You always tell your child, oh, what do you say? We tell them over and over and over. Hallelujah. What is God saying here? He's saying grow up. Just listen for a second. Grow up. Hallelujah. It comes a time where we absolutely positively have to just grow up. Amen. Amen. Glory be unto God. Number four. Number four. Hallelujah. Develop a grateful heart. It's our last point. Develop a grateful heart. Deuteronomy 15 and 15 says, you shall remember, you shall remember, you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. Everything that he just told us, he says, you shall remember that God redeemed you. Amen. Word redeemed is a very important word that will be a lasting theme throughout what I'm going to talk to you about next. Because that's what God did for you. Yeah. Incredible revelation is coming forth now. Everyone say redeem. redeem. The word redeem means to compensate for fault or bad aspects of something. God redeemed us. I'm going to teach you this revelation and insight about how you're going to change your life based on this revelation. God redeemed us. Hallelujah. Every now and again in my worship time, in my meditation time, God will instruct me to remember, to think back for a moment. And it's real good that we do that. Because sometimes we forget. And he's telling us here that we need to what? Remember. We need to remember. He'll tell me to look back and think about how far he's brought me. The obstacles that I've overcome, watch this, and the person that I used to be. Amen. Hallelujah, the things I used to do. Amen. My God from heaven. I was counseling a person one time and I told them, I said, look over your shoulder and look at all the lame bodies, broken relationships and hurt that has taken place. All the things that you've done. Don't stay there. Just look over your shoulder. Because every once in a while we need to look back and see how far God has brought us and be thankful. When I was a kid, we moved here to Atlanta when I was uh, 12 years old. And uh, several years later, we went back. To, we moved here from Indianapolis, Indiana. And, and several years later, uh, went back to Indianapolis. It was just uh, me and my uh, brother, my older brother, oldest brother, and, uh, and my dad. And I, I don't recall what business we had in Indianapolis, but we rolled back to Indianapolis with, with Pop. And, um, and uh, we were there, and, and Pop was handling some business and visiting with friends and so on and so forth. And we was like, hey, Dad, hey, Dad, can we drive over to the other side of town where we used to live? We want to see some of our old friends. And we were just teenagers, but Dad said, yeah, that's all right. He gave us the keys. He said, just be careful, and so on and so forth. So we drove back. And uh, when, when I left Indianapolis in 1980 or 81, when, when we left, we were, you know, uh, we, were, we were living with my grandmother uh, and granddad who uh, was living in Indianapolis at the time. They've, they've since, uh, you know, shortly thereafter, they also relocated to Salt Lake City and, and uh, different things. But, but we went back to the old neighborhood and we lived in the projects. And so when I got there, I was like, oh, my God. I could not believe that we were living this way. No, it was, it was awful. Even more surprisingly was the fact that some of my old friends 
were still there doing, oh my God, the same things. All I could do was say, oh God, thank you. Develop a heart of gratitude. I know we don't have everything that we desire. I know everything may not be the way that you want it to be, but to take time and look at how far God has brought you and all that he has done for you. Hallelujah. That's why that song was so, so impactful. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Hallelujah. Just take time to say. If you allow God, if you allow God to remind you, if we let him remind us of how far he's brought us and that we were once slaves and everything that, that we have is his by grace, man, it will help us to be grateful and it will help us to be generous. I'm going to close with this story. I'm going to close with this story. There was a, a pastor's uh, uh, a pastor's wife was being interviewed. This is a true story, by the way. A pastor's wife was being interviewed, and, and uh, uh, she was uh, being asked this question. Hallelujah. They asked her, they said, well, how do you feel when your husband gives, you know, wants to give all your stuff away? At this point during the interview, he had given away his house, his car, and everything in it more than twice. Can you imagine? <laughs> Give away your house? How many of you want to sow that car outside as a seed? I'll take it. <laughs> he give it away. Just give it away. Fully furnished. Everything. Now, he didn't give it away without her permission, you know what I'm saying? But it was just something that he really wanted to do. And they asked her, how, how do you feel? when he does this stuff. His wife responded. She says, I feel great. I feel great. I feel great because I remember how he was and how things were before he got saved. She said, I remember. You see, before he got saved, he was a drug addict. He was hooked on drugs. He now pastors a church over 20,000 people. But before he got saved, he was a drug addict. Their marriage was a mess. Their family was a mess. Finances were a mess. He was a mess. It, she was a mess. It was a hot mess. She says, I remember he was before he got saved. So when he wants to give everything away, oh man, I just, just bless the Lord. They said, wow, well, well, why do you think that he gives everything away? Why does he give such lavish gifts like that? He wrote a book. The book sold over a million copies. I just want you to know if you just, just basic math, a million Copies, if each book sold for $20, how much money is that? How many? Some of y'all not sure. 20 million. <laughs> You're like, uh, uh, t uh. <laughs> That's $20 million. $20 million with an M. And you know what he did? He gave all $20 million his church. 20 million. He gave 
that to the church. Incredible heart of generosity. In fact, he's the author of the book that I'm reading where many of these principles come out of. Watch this. They said, well, why do you think he gives these kinds of gifts? They're so lavish and, and large. Why? 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 This is what she said. Three reasons why. He's never gotten over getting saved. She says he never, he's never forgotten where he came from, most of all. And he's never forgotten that all we have is the Lord's. I'll talk about this some other time, but do you, do you think that God didn't know that his heart was like that when he got saved? The Bible says if you can't be trusted with unrighteous mammon, with worldly things, who will trust you with true riches? You think that God didn't know that he could trust him with 20 million? Oh, by the way, he's written many other books since that time that had the same level of success. Hmm. You talk about the proper way to do things, it starts here. God is working selfishness and greed out of our hearts. Bow your heads. Let's pray. Say this with me. Say, Father, I want a heart like yours so I can be like you, loving and generous. Forgive me for being selfish. Help me to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord a great day. God bless you.